Okay, today what we're going to work with in, in this module is we're going to work with the mixer pad. This is great for anyone who wants to paint like you would traditionally. Um, if you're new to digital, playing around with sliders is very uh, unintuitive uh, and it can be very challenging and frustrating. So if you have an experience or background of, let's say, 10, 20, 30 years of uh, painting, you just want to do something that you're used to. So um, what I'm going to show you now is going to give you that flexibility and it's really fantastic. There's nothing like it on the market in terms of other painting applications i found. Um, so let's just go ahead and get into it. Okay, so now that we're in Corel, let's go over to the color and layers drawer. We're going to go to the middle tab. It's your mixer pad. I'm going to pull this out because there's a couple of things I want you to see. Okay, we have color swatches across the top. We have the mixer pad in the middle. Then we have all of our tools in the bottom to allow us to access and play around with this. Okay, if you grab on the corner here and you have to be right in the corner, you'll see the crosshair click or show up. Click down and pull to extend this out. What you'll notice is that there's actually more swatches across the top. Um, you won't see those unless you pull it out. Okay. Now let's just go through this and discuss this a little bit. Pull this down. Now what we have is on the bottom tools, we have the first one, which is called dirty mode or dirty brush mode. What that means is if I came over here and I pick let's, uh, let me draw a brush mode for a second. So if I take this red and I paint it down. Okay. Then I pick this yellow and I start to paint. When I go back to paint down the next swatch, it's taking that new mixture and it applies that color down, um, which makes it very similar to real paint. Okay. It is becoming contaminated. Now, that's one way to do it. Now, for me, I actually don't like to work with it that way. I usually turn off the dirty mode that first button. And then when I come in here, I like to paint down my swatch. Okay, so here's my colors. Now, if I pick a different color, let's say this gray, and I paint it in, actually this paint something a lot lighter so you can see it. So if I paint in this white, if I keep painting, the color allows me to blend. But I will go right back to putting the white down. Now, here's another thing that's important. So let's say I put a little bit of white right here. What's great is if you look down here on the toolbar, this right here, the middle is a palette knife or it's a mix, it says mixed color. Think of it as a palette knife. If I hold the command key down and on PCs it would be control, you'll see it, it automatically toggles to that mixing palette knife. And so if I hold down command, I can mix with this. And then if I need to add more white, I just let go of my finger and I tap down a little white and hold the command key down and I can actually mix this some more. So let's say, for example, I take a little bit of this yellow, I can just dab it right there, hold the command key, and mix that into my color palette. So for me, it's a little bit more intuitive and it's a little bit easier to control the color. You may prefer the mixer mode, but for me, I think this works great. Okay, the next thing is you'll see there's an eyedropper tool here. Um, if you hold Option, it automatically toggles to it. If you want it to, you can just automatically come over here and just click it. But I, I don't like to do that because it forces me to keep going back and forth between the tools. So I typically will have the brush selected, hold command for mixing or blending. Okay. And then I hold option when I'm ready to sample the color. Okay. If I come down to paint, whatever color I sample from, okay. Hold option, you tap down, that will be the color that you'll paint with. All right. So let's say for like this yellow, and I paint that in there. So that's how that works. Now, here's something I want you to see that's a little well, before I jump into the other thing, let me point out one other thing. If I come down here and I paint, and I come back into the uh, mixer pad, if I hold option, and I'm holding option right now. You'll notice that the eyedropper is not showing up. This is just a little glitch. If you tap down once, then it'll automatically start showing up. I don't know why it's like that. 
uh, but it's been there for a while, this little bug. And if you have an older version, sometimes it'll actually uh, paint that color into your uh, mixer pad. So sometimes what I'll do is after I have everything mixed up perfectly, what I might do is just turn on the eyedropper so that when I paint down here, I come back in, it's automatically turned on. So that's kind of a little quick power tip that I do quite a bit. Now, I want to talk about the next thing. You'll see a mixer or an eyedropper and it says sample multiple colors. This is cool because certain brushes, right now I'm in artist oils. So certain brushes, and in this brush category, you'll see it. If I come down here and I pick two colors, like right in the middle here, when I come down to paint, you'll notice it allows me to get multiple tones on my brush when I load. So this is really cool. Okay, So if you're used to real paint, this is going to give you that ability to uh, layer your brush on uh, with two different colors on both sides of the bristles or the, the paint head. Okay, Now, that's what that is for. We have this zoom tool. So if we click on this, when you come in, you'll notice there's a plus sign. It allows us to zoom into your swatches. If you hold command, automatically what you'll see is the... Um, the minus sign you just tap and allow us to go back out of there all right and then we have space bar which is essentially the same as if you're painting you hold the space bar and i said uh space bar it's the hand move tool um if you hold space bar it allows you to move your your uh canvas around okay now let's talk about the next thing let's say i wanted different swatches up here to to in my mixer swatches to paint from okay so let's say for example i came over here and i picked um let's just say this light blue if i pick this light blue and i want it to sit up here in one of these uh pans of paint uh you or one of these squares when you go right over one of these sections if you hold command key and you tap it'll now place that swatch of color inside Okay, so let's just say I do it again. I just hold command and I can tap. Um, I can sit here and just obviously just tap anything I want and just keep tapping in this and with the same color, different colors, it really doesn't matter. But I can go ahead and just rearrange all of these colors in here. Okay, so that's a really uh, nifty little thing to be aware of. Um, if I go to the right, pull a uh, pop down menu here, you'll see that I have this middle tier it says load mixer colors save mixer colors reset okay so if i hit save whatever i have on that top row of colors if i top uh type in just i'll just leave it at mixer swatches okay and so now i save that out if i come in here let's say i want to go back to the default i can go reset mixer colors and now it's back to default if I wanted to go back to the mixer colors that I created because I want to save it for future projects and now reload it, you hit load mixer colors, you know, you'll see it right here, mixer swatches, and now it comes back in there. So you can save whatever you have, you can um, reload, and you can also go back to default. So you're, you know, there's, you don't make a mistake here, you don't have to worry. Um, now. Okay, if we come back up here to this top uh, part of this palette or pop-up menu, what this is, is if you create uh, mixers of, of, let's say like a mixer pad, I can make a new color set, okay? And it will be added over here to the uh, color set that we see in the color set libraries. And they'll make this color set based off the colors that I've mixed here. Um, I almost never use this, but it is something that's very handy and you uh, something you may want to consider using. Okay. Um, we see here we have dirty brush mode. That's the same thing that we have over here. Now we have open mixer pad, save mixer pad, clear mixer pad. So let's say, for example, let's hit clear mixer pad. I can start from scratch here. Okay. Um, so let's say, for example, I want to come in here and let's also reset my mixer colors. So I might start off with, let's say, this red. Let me put this brush down. 
And then I may come over here and sample something like this yellow ochre color. I'll take a little white, right? And then I just hold Command so I can start trying to mix, let's say, a flesh tone, okay? All right, so I can actually build out a whole palette here for um, portrait uh, painting. So let's say I create this swatch and it's everything I have, but let's add one more little bit of dab of color here. So in case I need a little shadow color. All right, and so that gives me more of a, a darker tone. Maybe I'll add a little bit of this blue. Um, and I just mix. So I get a little bit more of that kind of brown color. Uh, and if I need it to go back to white, just get a little bit more of this tint, I hold Command, and I just dab this in a little bit, okay? So I can take, also, Option, grab a little of this pink color, and just dab right here, hold Command key, and mix that out to get a lighter palette, or lighter color, okay? So now that I have this, what I could do is I could come over here and save this mixer pad. Okay, I can just go ahead and save it. I'm just going to leave it at mixer pad. Um, it's going to save it as .mx, .mxs. Go ahead and save it. So if I needed to come back over here and clear the mixer pad, okay, or if you scroll all the way down to the bottom, we also have a reset default mixer. Okay, so you can see that. So you, you don't lose anything. I could clear it. I can also come back to open mixer pad. And now you'll see it right here. I'll go ahead and click on that, open, and I have my mixer pad right back open. This is great because anything that you create, you can save for future projects. It's not like you did it one time and you lost it. So let's come back in here, okay? Okay, let's go back to the pop-up menu. Let's scroll down. So let's say we wanna change the background color here. Uh, we don't want that oatmeal color. We wanna make it something different. So if I go to change mixer background, I can come up here and I'm gonna use, I can pick any swatch that I want. So I'll just, just say I want that gray. So now I'm mixing my color based on that gray background. So this is important because if you're painting on a, a, a background that's say blue and you're painting on a color or a background that's oatmeal, when you're trying to put that color after you mix it onto the blue canvas when you're painting, it's not gonna match, color is relative, so you want your color to always, uh, you wanna be mixing on a, a ground that's similar to the area that you're actually painting. It's gonna allow your color to, to be more accurate. You're not gonna have as many mistakes, okay? And again, if you wanna go back and reset, you can go back to uh, Restore Default Mixer. Um, you can see also down here, there's, Restore, we have all of these different uh, artists that are connected with Corel. They have their mixer pads. You can kind of scroll through here. And you could see, if you want, you can load these up. Oops, I think I picked the same one. Let's go to uh, this one. Now let's talk about this next. You can load in a painting, a photograph, or anything like that. So if I come over here and I go to um, open mixer pad, you can scroll through and you can open anything. You can open uh, another uh, like swatch that you created like this. I can go in here and let's see here. We'll grab a photograph of actually, let's use a painting that I did a while ago. So I can open up this, this painting and drop this in here. And I could actually now hold option to start sampling the colors from this photo, right? This is awesome. And this is also why we have the magnifying glass because you may need to zoom in or you may need to zoom out to see the, the whole color. And you can see also that background is yellow. This is a time where I wouldn't want that. I probably want more of a grayish color and click like that. And so now I have this palette to work from. You can also, let's say you have a photograph or a painting that you've done previously, you can come in here and use this palette knife and you can start smearing everything around. I mean, right, you don't have to have it where you're seeing every little detail of the image, right? I can 
go in here, zoom in. And now go back to the mixer. Oops, make sure I have the mixer selected or hold down command. And I could smear things around to get additional colors. And I also can add color to this. Okay, so let's go back to the brush, dab, hold command. And now I'm introducing more color into this palette. Okay, if you want to zoom back out, magnifying glass, hold command or control, and tap out. So that's how you would open a mixer pad. If you like what you have, you can save that out as well. Okay. So this pretty much covers everything you're going to need for your uh, mixer pad. Um, I didn't show you this bottom slider down here. Basically, that's the size of your brush. Okay. So if you put your cursor over, it should tell you. Okay. So it just says brush size. So if you want a really big brush when you're painting stuff around in here, just make this wider. Okay. So you can see it just makes it bigger. And if you want to make it smaller, you just scroll down. But I almost never even touch that. Okay. So that is, again, the mixer pad. Okay, so if this is one of your first times uh, sitting in with me on these digital painting tips and you enjoyed it, please don't hesitate to uh, go down and hit the bell below, subscribe so you can stay informed on everything that we have going on. Um, this, is, this particular tutorial is part of a uh, master series in Curl Painter and this in particular is just dealing with the sections on color, swatches, mixer palettes, as well as the color wheels. So if you haven't checked those out yet, you'll definitely want to do that. Um, this is going to be, well, this is part of a playlist. So uh, again, stay up to date, get plugged in, and next time, juices.